Yo, what is up you guys? I hope y'all been partying like every day is their birthday Cause we got another one for y'all now On TikTok, my whole For You page is full of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles So I had to figure out what is going on We are gonna look into the last Ronin And we are gonna figure out what is happening Make sure y'all like and subscribe if you're new Five to six videos every day Tell ya boo and let's get right to it What's up my comic comrades? Turtle fans have been anticipating the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Last Ronin miniseries for several months now, and guess what? Yeah. Issue 1 just dropped earlier this week. Until now, the identity of the Last Ronin has been a secret, but by the end of the first issue, we find out which turtle is the Last Ronin in this post-apocalyptic turtle story. Also, I just have to say, this series marks the return of TMNT creators and original creative team Kevin Eastman and Peter Laird. To the TMNT comic. Oh, bet. We got the original creators and this thing. It, they they need to make a movie, first off. Who the fluff reads comics anymore? Come on now. Let's have it so we can all enjoy it. Meaning this series hits all the nostalgia feels for me, as I'm sure it will for many of you. But enough chatting. It's time to break down the first issue of The Last Ronin. And of course, there's going to be spoilers galore for this issue, as we're going to tell you who The Last Ronin is. So, you've been warned. Hey, 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 you heard him. The comic opens up oh with the last Ronin, gosh. aka the last surviving Ninja Turtle, walking into what looks like sludge. Then we see people talking to the last Ronin off panel saying, cold, huh? And he replies, yeah, all the time. These people off panel continue to say, forget the temperature, the toxicity level's gotta be off the charts. You'd have to be crazy to swim in that sludge. The last Ronin says, maybe, but no bridges and no boats. Don't leave me much of a choice. Okay, enough chit chat. And on the next page, we see the sludge or body of water the last Ronin is walking in is the water that surrounds Manhattan. That's right, in this post-apocalyptic future, every way in and out of Manhattan has been closed off and all the water surrounding it is now toxic sludge. Oh, on the next page, damn. Ronin continues to say, the water is ice cold, smells wrong, tastes even worse. Definitely not fit for human survival. That's okay, I'm not human, and I've got plenty of my own nasty. Hey, teenage the wall of Manhattan. On the next page, he says a couple of crappy cameras, rusty barbed wire, and and no guards. Looks like they're way more worried about people getting out than in. That's a mistake. I'm gonna make damn sure of it. Time to finish this, as he hops the wall, making his way into this future New York City. The Ronin then hides in an alley in the shadows while those voices continue to talk to him off panel saying, what, you were expecting a leisurely stroll the whole way or something? And we thought the Lower East Side was overcrowded before. Ronin replies, doesn't matter. The plan stays the same. I just need to get from here. To Dang, whoever drew this up though, these comics look very crispy, man. The detail is very nice with it. I like. Me likey, me likey. But, uh... Like I said, I, I want to see this into a movie, There, man. as he points to what looks like an Emperor's Tower. This panel also reveals the voices that have been talking to him off screen are his three dead brothers. Now, we're not sure if he's actually able to talk to his three dead brothers or if these are just hallucinations he's having to help him get through this. We also don't know which of the three brothers are dead, meaning we obviously don't know who the Ronin is. So until that's revealed at the end of the issue, I'm just going to keep calling this turtle Ronin. The Ronin's brothers then ask, how do you suppose to get to that tower? You just going to grab a cab? That's a long ass hump and a mutant packed head to toe with weapons don't exactly blend in. Ronin says, tell me something a little more obvious. Besides, you know the drill, <laughs> adapt and overcome. His brothers then say, good luck with that. Ronin replies, luck has nothing to do with it. Do or do not. As we see Ronin steal a motorcycle from a girl named Jones. Is this Jones girl related to Casey Jones? We don't know. Ronan now on the motorcycle yeah, realizes his way towards that is. tower he was talking about earlier. But in the process, he makes quite a bit of noise, even throwing his motorcycle Intuition. into a fuel tanker, causing a massive explosion. Having brought quite a bit of attention onto himself, he's forced to hide in a sewer system. But when he pops out, he's stopped by robotic security guards saying, uh -oh. Halt, intruder. Ronan says, Crap, security is lightly armored, some kind of robocops. Time for an old trick, pulling out ninja smoke bombs to buy himself time to get away. But that doesn't work as these robocops, or robo ninjas as he later calls them, are tougher than they look. But he eventually bashes one in the face so hard that the helmet cracks open. And after he does, he says, What the hell? And one of his brothers asks, Is that a human inside that armor? Looks like some kind of cyborg. I think more synthetic than yeah. human. A synthetic ninja, a stinking sinja? Then what you kind can. of Sick freak does that to someone, and Ronan. A uh, Sinja. 
answers his brother saying, the reason I'm here, that's who. And I should have said this earlier, but can I just say the last Ronin looks so badass with all of his weapons and gear. This is the coolest looking Ninja Turtle ever. No, and he does look pretty badass. I ain't gonna lie. ASAP. Anyway, the Ronins then hears one of the cyborgs say, Unit 109 has been disabled, scanning for suspect. He then says to himself, place is gonna be crawling with those things soon. Need to keep moving, stay on mission. And remember the first real lesson our father ever taught us. Strike hard, fade away, never lose focus. As he finally arrives at the tower, looking up at it. But needless to say, Man, it's this still makes me want to be a ninja. Let me get some nut jokes. Start attacking him for the next few pages causing a pretty epic battle in this futuristic New York. There's even flying cars that look straight out of the fifth element, and the Ronin is able to hijack a flying police car. But needless to say, he doesn't know how to fly the thing, so he crashes it through a billboard saying, this isn't good, before jumping out, and then the police car crashes and blows up behind him, to which he says, seriously? And one of his brothers says, smooth moves, classic, you still can't fly 10 feet in a straight line. And Ronin just replies, whatever. Shut up. Ronan then says, my brothers are right. I need to stick to what I know best. And of course, that's running and jumping off of rooftops. Then on the next page, we see the reason why this last turtle or the Ronan wants to get to that tower. Because the ruler of the city, Oroku Hirodo, is in there. For those of you who are like fantastic, who the heck is that? He's the ruler of this futuristic New York City, but more importantly, Shredder's grandson and new master oh, yeah, of the Foot him. Clan. And obviously, he's not too thrilled that someone is making a disturbance in his city, so he sent his captain to find and execute the Ronin, and he wants him to do so on camera so everyone in the city can watch, making an example of what happens to people when they disobey his will. Oh, anyway, shit, on the page, he's Ronin talking to himself, saying, from the day him and his brothers were born, their father trained him and his brothers to fight in the war between their families for respect, for honor, for revenge. And now, after decades of murder and death, I've had enough, as he finally makes his way inside the bottom of the tower. But once he makes his way in there, he sees military-grade equipment everywhere and hardcore foot soldiers, who are now futuristic cyborgs, yeah, much like that. the ones he was fighting earlier. He tries to blow by them all by hopping on a motorcycle and causing an explosion, but that doesn't work, so he's forced to get into a huge battle with him against a crap ton of cyber foot soldiers. Meanwhile, Hirodo looks on via the cameras, telling his captain, why am I looking at the terrorists infiltrate inside the lower levels of my tower? His captain says, I understand your concern, but I have activated every resource available to stop him. Hirodo replies, no, I don't think you understand. Either I have his head on a pike before this day is through, or I will have yours. Meanwhile, the Ronin is able Whoa. to handle these futuristic foot. I'm sorry to break it to you there, buddy, but if you don't have his head, he gonna have yours. That's the only two options. Soldiers cutting off their limbs and busting their cyber skulls left and right. But just when he makes his way towards the top, futuristic flying mousers with lasers start attacking him. Then a huge mouser starts charging what him, the for which Ronan stabs him in the chest with a sword. But it's too late, because the mouser tackled him through a window, causing him to free fall to the ground below. On the streets below, we see Ronan bloody and broken, but still alive and pissed that he almost had Hirodo as he was at the top, but got tackled out a window last minute. But before the foot soldiers can recover the body, that Jones girl from earlier and her friends tells them the dude you're looking for isn't dead. He took off that way. To which the foot soldiers say, all units, the terrorist is still alive. Redirect pursuit towards Central Park. We then see that the Ronin went down a sewer and the Jones girl followed him. Elsewhere, Hirodo is extremely pissed that the turtle got away and even says, how the hell was he even alive to commence such idiocy? I wiped those dreadful things from the face of the earth a decade at, ago. He then baby looks at his mom in, in some sort of cryo chamber oh, saying, mom? no matter, you need not worry. As always, I have it under control. Nothing oh, will ever threaten my ironclad rule over Stop. the city. This empire I have forged, and you will always be here to share in my glory, and to witness as I finish all that you could not, dearest mother. So that's pretty crazy. His mother is in some sort of cryo chamber. I'm sure that's going to be super important later on. Anyway, Hirodo's captain then comes in saying the terrorist is still on the loose, which obviously doesn't make him too happy. Meanwhile, beneath the sewer, our last turtle, or Ronin, is saying to himself, could have gone down fighting. Let those things finish me off, but that just be avoiding the inevitable. Knew this was a suicide mission from the start. Need to end this now, on my own terms. As he starts taking off his gear and laying his weapons right in front of him. This turtle continues to say, we were always so different, so much alike. I miss my brother so much, as he opens a bag laying down all four of their colored bandanas. He continues to say, I miss my father more than anything else. I wanted to make him proud. In the end, too little too late. Story of my life. He then takes Leonardo's broken sword and points it towards his chest saying, I'm sorry, father. I failed. Do Please not do that. Me. Stop. That's right. Whichever turtle this is, he's about to kill himself because he failed. That's some hardcore stuff right there. But before he can put the blade through his chest, he passes out due to losing too much blood. But just as he passes out, that Jones girl finds his body saying, holy crap, no way. You're, you're a mutant turtle. We then see that this turtle is in some sort of turtle heaven and that he reunited with his brothers in the sewer. But guess what? It's not because 
because this turtle actually isn't dead. As on the final page of the issue, we see him wake up in a hospital bed with an older mother freaking April O'Neil bringing him soup and tea. To which this turtle says, April, is that really you? She replies, yes, it's me. And I'm so relieved to see you awake. You really had me worried, mister. But who are you just talking to, Michelangelo? And just like that, the comic ends. That's right, Michelangelo, friends, which one's Michelangelo? Is that the uh, one with the shtick? Hold on. Michelangelo. It's either that or... No, that's Don... No. Michelangelo, Ninja Turtle. Ninja Turtle. Hold on, y'all. Oh, that's the goofy one? It's oh, that. And much older. But not only that, the big reveal of this issue is... The last Ronin is none other than Michelangelo. He was actually one of my guesses. I thought it was either gonna be him or Raphael. And I gotta say, I like that they went with Michelangelo. Raph would have been the obvious pick as he's the badass of the group, but making Michelangelo the baby and jokester of the group, the last turtle left to bring redemption hey, to him and his brother. Yo, they have to make that a movie because Michelangelo as the main character would be so funny. It's pretty awesome. Overall, I really enjoyed this issue. I think it's off to a great start, but I still have tons of questions like, how were the turtles killed? What happened to New York City and the Shredder? Yeah, man, I don't give a fluff about any of that. I just want to know when's the movie. So let me know when that is. You guys have an amazing day. Hope you guys understand now all the Ninja Turtle stuff going on. And uh, hopefully Michelangelo uh, whoops some booty cheeks, man. Gets his dub. Y'all be easy. Y'all have an amazing day. And deuces.